Okay, so very good morning to you. So we start with the same slide where we left last time. And this slide 24 is the one where we have, we had a lot of discussion about it because the idea was that, that how we can disprove the statement given by Modigliani and Miller that financing makes no difference. And this, this was a typical example where we studied that, you know what, actually it's not. So even though the companies have the same level of operating profit, the idea was that there are two companies who have the same operating profit and the operating profit is the result of your asset side, the assets, the company's investment. The, and their theory was that the company's total performance would be unaffected by the debt or equity or a mixture or whatever. But then we saw that when we have with debt situation, the case of labor company, and this company was able to produce this extra surplus value to the company, which uh, its counterpart, the unlevered company with no debt was not able to produce. So there's a margin, there's a gap of $27.20 .20 between the levered and unlevered companies. And this 27.20 was purely uh, generated by the financing side. That's how the company is financed. Uh, that is what is the company's capital structure, debt equity ratio. So we go on. Uh, maybe I change the view a little bit. Uh, Full screen, okay, not so bad. Um, you can see that this text shield, this this twenty seven point twenty, which uh, we have, we know how it's calculated. It is called uh, the interest tax shield because this is the. If you see this twenty seven point twenty, is basically eight uh, percent. Uh, it is TC, the corporate tax, which was, uh, how much was the corporate tax? The corporate tax was 340. Uh, and 8% was basically the interest. So you can see that it was 0 0.34, the corporate tax rate, 34%, okay, times the interest. And the interest was $80. Uh, so if you multiply $80 with uh, 0.34, which is the corporate tax rate, it comes out to be 27.20. So basically, uh, if you want to know the formula of how this 27.20 is derived, it is equal to 34%. 34% is the corporate tax rate. So 34% is basically 0.34 and you multiply with the interest payment and the interest payment you had was $80, if you see here. So in the future, if you want to calculate the interest tax shield, interest tax shield is this amount, 27.20, which the levered company gets, but the unlevered company does not get. This is obtained by by multiplying the corporate tax rate with the in, uh, with the with the interest, um, so basically this thirty four percent, this twenty seven point twenty, uh, this is not generated by the company. It's very important because if it was generated by the company's operations, then it should have been in the operating profit. And we know that the operating profit or the EBIT is same for both companies. That's why the starting point was thousand thousand for both. Uh, levered and unlevered companies. This is basically a contribution made by the government or the tax authorities uh, towards the company which borrows and it doesn't go to the company which doesn't borrow. Um, if nothing changes, just uh, I'm taking a hypothetical example that if nothing changes, this year, levered and unlevered companies had thousand. Uh, the company has a permanent debt of $1,000, it pays 8% rate of interest. So basically this slide is repeating every year, every year. So every year EBIT is 1,000 for both companies. 
Uh, the debt doesn't change, it remains 1,000 forever. Uh, the interest rate doesn't change, it remains forever. Uh, the tax rate doesn't change, it remains forever at 34%. Then this 27.20 is the amount, is the interest tax shield, which the levered company would get every year. Every year. Now underline this word, every year. If something is forever, uh, in English we call it perpetual. Perpetual is a word in English we use forever, that if something goes perpetual, forever. And the derivation of the word perpetual is called perpetuity. Perpetuity is the income which you get for the rest of your life, basically. For instance, when you retire at the age of 60, 65, whatever, then you start getting the pension every month, okay? And this pension you get is for forever, basically. You know, of course, there are different varieties of pension you get, but the more traditional form of pension is that you get it until you die. It means this is the income stream which you will get forever. Forever means perpetually. And this pension can also be called as perpetuity, which means this is the income stream which you get or maybe pay uh, forever. Uh, so it means that this 27.20 is the money which comes to your bank account for doing nothing. <laughs> well, it is a little bit exaggeration to say it's doing nothing, but this is you get because you have borrowed $1,000 uh, and this $1,000 would remain forever. You never decrease or increase your debt. Uh, the interest rate remained forever, 8%, and the tax rate remains 34% forever. If that is the case, then 27.20 is something which you will be getting every year, okay? Uh, if you want to find the value of, if you want to find the present value of the perpetuity, then what would you, what is the value of this? You get 27.20 this year, next year, the following year, three years later, four years later, 10 years later, maybe 100 years later. What, what is the present value of this money? You get 27.20 every year. That is called present value. And the present value is like this. So the present value of tax shield is that uh, you get 27.20 this year and every year. What is the other way of getting 27.20? Well, if you are, if you have deposited $340 in a bank and the rate of interest is 8%, remember 8%? 8% is the same rate at which this U company, the uh, sorry, the L company, the levered company borrowed. So this is a rate of interest. So if you deposit, $340, okay? If you deposit $340, let's say in a bank, and the rate of interest is 8%, and you never withdraw this money from the bank, and the rate of interest doesn't change, then every year you get $27.20 in your bank account. It means that the present value of this lifetime perpetuity equals 27.20 is, so this lifetime 20 perpetuity which you get, the present value of this additional income equal to 27.20, uh, the present value of this income is $340. And how do you get it? I divide the income stream 27.20 by 8% rate of interest. And this gives me 340. So forget about this example of levered company or unlevered company. If I want that, I should be richer by $27.20 every year. Uh, and a very basic alternative is that uh, if the market rate of interest is 8%, uh, then how much money I should deposit with the bank? That I get $340 each year. And the, so that's so how much money I should deposit? with the bank that I get $27.20 each year, and that is 340. If you apply 8% on 340, this is exactly equal to 27.20. And 
since $27.20, which you get is your interest tax shield, then $340, which you get is called your debt tax shield. I'm giving a very big statement now. The $27.20, which you get every year as a cash inflow, uh, thanks to financing, uh, because the company is levered, having debt. This 27.20, this additional stream, which we saw here, is called interest tax shield. But if you are interested that what is the present, this 27.20 you can get for the rest of your life, but what is the present value of this income stream which you get for the rest of your life is equal to $340, $340. And this is called debt tax shield. I repeat, 27.20 is your interest tax shield and $340, which is the present value of this uh, future cash flow is called debt tax shield. And you can see the formula at the bottom. I did some derivation. If you are interested, you can have a look. But the final formula is TC. TC is called T. And in the foot, the subscript is C. It's corporate tax rate uh, multiplied by D. D is what? The debt. Debt was 1,000. If you remember, the levered company borrowed $1,000 and the tax rate was 34%. So if I multiply 34% with 1,000, it gives me 340. It means that this 340 is basically the debt tax shield formula is equal to corporate tax rate multiplied by the amount of debt the company has borrowed. Okay, and this debt tax shield would be more if the tax rate is more, imagine, this tax rate was uh, uh, not 34%, but 60%. Then 60% multiplied by 1,000 would have been 600. So in other words, uh, this debt tax shield, this additional value which the levered company can borrow uh, will be more in those countries or in, for those companies where the tax rate is high. So in other words, if you are living in a country where the tax rate is very low, uh, then this debt tax shield will not be much. It will be a small amount. But if you live in a country where the debt, where the tax is huge, uh, 50%, 60%, like, like, like in many countries, like, like in Finland, for example, in most of the Scandinavian country, uh, the corporate tax rate is quite high. So you can imagine that those companies who borrow uh, are capable of generating uh, more debt tax shield based on this formula. Even though this is not a full story, the full story will follow. But the idea, the apparent idea is that based on this argument, based on this debt tax shield formula, uh, the countries where tax rate is more, uh, the corporate tax rate is more, uh, you are able to generate more value for the lifetime of the company. Uh, the product, the formula is the product of corporate tax rate multiplied by debt. So for a given amount of tax rate, if you borrow more, you generate more value. Or for the same amount of debt, if the tax rate is more, you are still able to uh, generate more value. So imagine this tax rate is 60% and you don't borrow $1,000, but you borrow $2,000, for example. So then 60 times 2,000 would be 1,200 not 340, but 1200. But of course, this is not easy. This is not a uh, piece of cake. There are many uh, repercussions to it. If you, if you are able to borrow, if you keep borrowing more and more and more, uh, then there are some other issues which will, uh, the company would be encountering, but that we shall discuss later on. But I just want to put one side of the picture that this, uh, this $340 for the lifetime is a reputation, is a, is a criticism or disproof of Modigliani and Miller's theorem that uh, debt or no debt doesn't matter. Whatever is a form of financing doesn't matter. Financing is not the main present, main substance, but only a, a paper, a wrapping paper. No, it's not. This 
generate this value has been generated purely by the financing side. 27.20 for one year and 340 for lifetime is generated by uh, the financing side only. So this is the beauty of uh, a company getting levered or leveraged. But this sounds very rosy. I, it's a disclaimer that 340, I mean, if it's millions, it would be a big amount. Uh, but it's not free of cost. It has some side effects that we shall discuss later on. So I'm only I'm only reading those things in these slides, which uh, I haven't said. But most of the things I have said, actually. Uh, yeah. So in the slide 26, you can see the formula, which is equal to uh, yeah. So since now the total value of debt appears in the formula, it can be terms in the present value of debt. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I said. If the firm doesn't borrow permanently or does not have enough income to be eligible to use tax shield the present value. Yeah, that's also true. Uh, that if you borrow for a year or two and then you, then you give the money back to the lender, then you will not get this 340 amount or the maximum amount. Remember in the previous example, 340 is a limit, is a, is a maximum amount. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that every company would be able to maximize his debt tax shield. It, actually, it can be a very good thesis topic that what is the optimal debt tax shield of a company and how much the company is capable of doing it. Uh, and then you can see the optimal debt tax shield and you compare with the actual debt tax shield and see why the company was uh, over levered or under levered. So if somebody has an interest in this topic, please do take it. Um, I just realized that it's a very interesting topic. Okay, so if the company doesn't borrow permanently or if the company doesn't have enough income, <laughs> remember that we, uh, we pay, we pay out of profits, the interest, uh, you know, uh, we also pay tax. But if your operating profit is so small that you are not capable of paying tax, remember you have to pay tax, but there could be a situation when you are not able to pay tax. And that situation is that when you are having losses, yeah? So when the losses continue, then it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So imagine uh, if this uh, calculation, uh, if 1,000 was, uh, for instance, uh, it was not 1,000, but something minus, all right? Uh, then the tax you will not pay. Or if the amount of uh, uh, EBIT is not 1,000, but small, uh, small positive or even negative, then you will not be able to get the uh, debt tax shield fully. Because remember that when your EBIT, when your profit before tax uh, is negative, you don't pay tax. Because in many countries, rather most of the countries, if you have the losses, you don't pay tax. As a matter of fact, you recover. You get a, you get a reimbursement. Uh, what is the word in, uh, we use in the normal language? Tax credits you get. So that it's not you who pay. You pay the tax, the company pay the tax when your profits are, which profit? The profit before tax is positive. But if your profit before tax is negative, then you don't pay tax. It's the state who gives you the tax subsidy or what we call as a tax credit. Because it's, a, it's based on a relationship. The relationship is that in the good times, the company is contributing to the exchequer, to the, to the treasury to the tax, uh, but in the bad times of the company, uh, the state would give some kind of subsidies or, like in many countries, you can see that uh, if you have a loss this year, you can claim from the state some benefit. And this benefit will be coming from the last three years taxes you have paid. Now imagine this is 2020, yeah? And this, this year you have a loss. You will not pay tax. But you paid tax in 2019, 200 euros. Uh, you paid uh, 2018 tax, 100, which makes 300. 
uh, in 2017, you paid another 300 tax. So altogether, 600. So you have paid last three years, 600 euros to the state, to the tax man. And this year you have a loss. So you can take some tax credit out of the 600 uh, dollars or euros what you paid to the state in the last three years. So in that case, when you are having this kind of tax reimbursement or, or tax recoup or tax subsidy or tax credits, whatever word you use, uh, that would not, uh, that would destroy your formula or everything calculation about the debt tax shield. So it's very important that you have the, you have a certain consistent, uh, you know, the EBIT uh, and the profit before tax. Okay, but remember that the overall formula is that uh, you can find the present value of uh, this benefit arising out of debt by multiplying the corporate tax with the amount of debt. So apparently in those countries where tax rate is high, um, the debt tax shield would be high, or apparently those companies who borrow more, uh, they would also be able to generate more debt tax shield. But of course, as I said before a few times, it's not a one-way traffic, there's a cost too. And the cost we shall discuss a bit later. Uh, if you want to find the value of a company, well, the value of a company you can find in the book value, the total assets, uh, the market value of the company you can find in the market as the market capitalization of the company. But the one formula, one way of looking at the company's formula, uh, the value is from uh, this financing side. And that is, you can calculate the value of an unlevered company. So you can imagine that the company has no debt at all. If company has no debt at all, what would be its value? Okay, and then you calculate the present value of tax shield and then add it up and that would give you the value of the company. Okay, and because in the normal circumstances when your profits are positive, when your operating profit is positive, when your profit before taxes are positive, uh, when you keep, when you continue to borrow, um, then you are able to generate a positive uh, present value of tax shield. And when you add it, then what happened is that the value of the, rather I should call it value of the, un, uh, I should call it value of the levered firm. Value of the levered firm is equal to value of the unlevered firm. Just to recall, lever, unlevered company is that which has zero debt, no debt, and plus the present value of tax shield, the way we calculated here. If you add it up, it makes the total value of the company. And that's what your task eight is based on. But before I explain the task, I want you to ask me if you have any questions. And All right, now we have task eight. Uh, task eight is, uh, so, Task 8 is based on the uh, real life scenario. Uh, I would say <clears throat> that you pick up a company for task 8, which you have analyzed before in some of the previous tasks, like uh, task 7, 6. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at task 1, it's very basic. Uh, task 2, 3. And to some extent, four. I think then you can have task two and three where we discuss more than one company because we make a portfolio. Uh, but if you look at task four, Jensen's Alpha, here you pick one company. Stick with that company. Take the same company for Jensen Alpha. Take, I mean, that's my suggestion to you. You, you don't have to follow it. Task five was, I think, uh, operating leverage. Task six was about unlevered beta. Uh, task seven was about unlevered cost of capital. And then come this task eight, uh, levered value of the levered company. I would say that because from task four and onwards, 
Uh, all the calculations are based on one company. So stick with that company, one company. That's my suggestion to you. So that you can make a very in-depth calculation about that company. Uh, and what I will do, uh, if you remember that there is a, a file in the spreadsheets called FinAir Comprehensive Analysis something, FinAir, yeah, it starts with the FinAir. And if you look at that spreadsheet, you will see that uh, basically all the tasks, except the first task, um, I have done everything about task two, three, four, five, six, seven in that spreadsheet. So what I will do, I will also make some contribution based on task eight in that spreadsheet and upload the, the new version in Optima. So that, so basically uh, I would be doing everything based on, uh, on uh, I mean, uh, I, I would be doing it on the case company, my case company, Finair, but then nobody else will take Finair, remember, because then it's no, no fun, okay? All right, coming back. So my suggestion is that, uh, take one company for task four, five, six, seven, eight, and if there is any other. Uh, I just have to pause the recording. So as I said before, keep the same company um, for the, because that's the what we have been doing for task four, five, six, seven, and eight, and maybe to follow. Uh, take a data of three years. Uh, we, we shall be calculating the debt tax shield based on three years, basically for the same company. And I think you don't have to, uh, you need to look at two years annual reports because of the financial statements, not even the annual report, but the financial statement. Because if you remember that, if you want to see, um, there's no data available for 2020 for sure, because 2020 is ongoing. Um, 2019 you can now because yeah so and i don't care about the year you can take 2018 17 16 or 19 18 17 it's totally up to you and what is your job your job is to calculate debt tax shield over a time of three year period and how you do it because remember that first of all you have to calculate the value of an unlevered company if you want to find the unlevered company, uh, you need to assume that all the debt is actually equity. Do you get my point? So you will assume normally the companies would be having debt. And where you see the debt, you see the debt in the balance sheet, liability side of the company. So you would assume that whatever is the debt so the company has zero liability. So basically it's all uh, equity. And then uh, you will be calculating the value of the unlevered company, basically that if it is unlevered, what would be the value? And then you will be calculating uh, the value of the debt tax shield that if it borrows, uh, what, what is the rate of tax? And then you multiply PC with D and then you add this component, TC multiplied by D in this, uh, in this formula here. So you have the first, you, you need to assume that the company is unlevered. I can bet you that all the companies which you are reviewing for this task, they all are levered company. They would be having some debt. But what your job would be to assume that all the debt is equity. So there's no debt. So for example, if the company's finance debt or the borrowing is 200 and the equity is 1000, you can call equity as 1200. And that would be the value of the unlevered company. And then you add the present value of tax shield. How you get it? How you get the present value of tax shield? Well. First of all, you need to get the interest tax shield. And the interest tax shield is here. Interest tax shield is, you get the corporate tax rate multiplied by the interest rate. Okay, that becomes the interest tax shield. Uh, interest, you pay, uh, you look at the, how do you calculate the interest? Well, you can, 
you can see that um, if a company has borrowed as the finance debt, long term and short term, let's imagine, I can do the calculation uh, simultaneously so that we don't miss out anything. So for example, the company has the current debt 100 and the non-current debt 200, the total debt is 300. And this you get from the company's uh, balance sheet. So the current debt is 100, non-current debt is 200, total debt is 300. And then you need to find out how much is the interest rate. Then you find out from the income statement that the company has paid uh, 30 euros as the finance cost. There are many names for the interest. You can call it interest rate. You can call it finance cost. Uh, you can call it debt, interest, the different names, but you can see it. But the most important thing is that the finance cost you see in the income statement. And this comes to be 30. So if I divide 30 by 300, it comes to be 0 0.10, which means that the average interest rate is 10%. And this 10% uh, is, you can get from here. Uh, okay. And then you can see the corporate tax rate. The corporate tax rate, I think we also discussed that how you get the corporate tax rate. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to ask you people and then I, I'll explain it afterwards that how you can find the corporate tax rate. Um, remember, it's very important to know that uh, the tax rate and effective tax rate. If you are just Googling uh, the corporate tax rate in a country in Finland, Norway, Sweden, wherever, that is the headline corporate tax rate. But that doesn't mean that every company is paying that uh, that percentage of tax. Every company is paying. No, it's false. It, it cannot happen. You need to calculate. There's a phenomena called. I'm adding to your vocabulary. It's called effective tax rate. Effective tax rate is that tax rate which a particular company you are investigating is paying. And how do you how do you know it? You have the profit before tax, or sometimes you call it income before tax or the earnings before tax or the pre-tax income before tax pre means before and this is let's say 300 okay and then you find that uh, the tax you pay is uh, 40 and your post a tax earning or profit after tax or income after tax or the earnings after tax is 260. But that's not a problem. You know that you have paid $40 or euros in the tax and your profit before tax was 300. So I divide 40 by 300 and it comes to be 13.33%. Uh, so I can see that uh, regardless of the headline tax rate, uh, in the country where this company is located or registered, this particular company is paying 13.33% rate of tax. So this is called effective tax rate. And what you are supposed to calculate is the effective tax rate. So you need two things. You need to know the amount of debt, which you can see in the company's liability side of the balance sheet. And generally, the tax, the, the debt is both in the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities. Current liabilities, uh, you can see the finance debt or debt. The different names for debt, uh, it's called just debt. It's called finance debt. Uh, it's also called interest-bearing liabilities. Uh, and you will see both in the current liabilities and the non-current liabilities. The current liabilities, uh, when it's included there, it means that this is a debt which you have to pay within a year. And when the, the, the finance debt is in the non-current liabilities, it means that you would, would repay it after a year. It could be many years, but definitely after a year. 
and when you add them both it becomes total finance debt okay and this you will be multiplying with uh, the tax rate and the tax rate you will be calculating by uh, the amount of tax you pay which you can see in the income statement and this you divide by the profit before tax and that would give you uh, the effective tax rate the company pays like for example if you google corporate tax rate and it comes to be 40 percent let's say uh, in finland um, i'm not sure but if it is 40 percent it doesn't mean that nokia kone finnair everybody is paying 40 percent no, no 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 that's a that's a the headline or a or, or, or a kind of the base uh, corporate tax rate actually the company would be paying different uh, rates of taxes and that you calculate uh, when you have the profit before tax uh, you divide the amount of tax the company is paying the absolute amount of tax it pays divide by the absolute amount of profit before tax and that would give you uh, a term called effective tax rate and that's what we will be using in this task okay um, um, i think i can explain this whole phenomena uh, with the help of this uh, finnair example um, as you know the slide which i showed to you it says that you need to first assume that the company um, is unlevered. There's no debt at all. And effectively, it will not make any difference. So for example, if you see this uh, balance sheet, which I can try to zoom, maybe it works. Yeah, so if you see this balance sheet, you can see that the total of asset side is equal to total of equity and liability, total liabilities, okay? Um, so if I assume that every debt, where is debt by the way? Uh, debt is here for Finnair. Um, so you can see that the total, because if you know the book value of the company, the, we use the balance sheet equation. The balance sheet equation says that the total of assets are equal to total of equity and liabilities and you can see that the total of assets is equal to total of equity and liability so this is exactly as the theory says uh, the first thing is that we need to find the value of unlevered company unlevered means the company has no debt uh, no company has zero debt i think it's very difficult to find a company these days with zero debt uh, for example, this example which I'm giving you, uh, Finnair has a debt. The debt is in the non-current, well, they call it interest-bearing liabilities. So different companies may use different phrases, uh, but they give you some hint. But if you are confused, ask me, okay? Uh, interest-bearing liabilities is a finance debt, is a debt. And this you can see is in the heading non-current liabilities, which means it's a long-term debt. And then also we have here uh, the interest uh, bearing liabilities. And these are the short period, I mean less than a year. Uh, okay, so this is this assumption is wrong, but let's assume, let's assume that the company is having no debt. So 132.4. And what was the amount? 586.2 are basically no debt, but equity. Well, if I don't call these two numbers as debt, but I call them as equity, the total would remain same, basically. There's, there's no change in the total. Uh, this 132.4 and 586.2, I don't call it debt, I call it equity. The total remains same. So the value of the unlevered company would be basically the same. It makes no difference practically. Okay, so <clears throat> that's the first thing. The second thing is that you need to add debt tax shield. And the debt tax shield, how do you get it? You get it by multiplying corporate tax rate with the amount of debt. So I write down how much is the amount of debt for Finnair in 2017. So when I have the long-term debt, it is 586.2. 
And when I multiply, uh, sorry, when I add the short-term debt, the current debt, it's 132.4. So when I add it, it becomes uh, become eight, 11, six, and seven. So it's, it total is, total debt is 718.6. So I know how much is B, 781.6. Now I need to find the tax rate. To calculate the tax rate or the effective tax rate, I need to go back to the income statement of uh, FINAIR, uh, which is here. Income statement is here. So I find that the results before taxes or the profit before taxes is 211.1. And the tax which company pays is 41.7. 41.7. So 41.7 is the amount which the company is paying tax. And 211.1 is equal to the profit before tax. So when I divide, uh, let me calculate here. If I use my calculator, uh, lost in. So if I have 41.1, 41.7, sorry, 41.7. And if I divide it by 211.1, it comes out to be 19.7. 75%. So it means that Finnair in 2017 has paid 19.75%, uh, you know, <clears throat> the tax rate, the tax basically. How do I take it away? Uh, maybe just minimize it. 19.75. And same way, if I look at the previous year, um, you can see here, last year, 2016, uh, Finnair's profit before tax was 105.8, and Finnair paid 20.6. So now I divide if 20.6, 20.6, if I divide by uh, 105, one oh five one oh five point eight it comes to be nineteen point four seven so last year the company paid nineteen point four seven percent of tax rate so and same way now interestingly I want to share the screen with you once more if I just google it so so this one you calculate uh, nineteen point four seven or seventeen point whatever these are the effective tax rates and that's what we need that's what we need for this task. But if I just share, uh, if I share the screen with you, um, where is the screen I'm sharing? Some blank. Wait a sec. So if I share the screen, new share, is it blank? And if I just write down, for example, corporate tax rate and lend. Uh, it will be different amounts. The corporate tax, the, uh, this kind of some trading economics.com says, Corporate tax in Finland is average 33.6%. 33.6%. And you have seen with your own eyes that the company has never paid 33.6%. One year, 2017, they pay 17.75. And in previous year, in 2016, they pay 19.47%. So you can see that effective tax rate is way different from, way different from the uh, the, the the headline tax rate. So we what we will do is the uh, okay. Now uh, we 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 knew that seventeen point seven five percent is the uh, you know is basically the amount the percentage of corporate tax rate it pays. 
And if we want to find what is the total debt, debt tax shield, I would multiply this debt, this 0, uh, 70 0.75% with the amount of debt. So what I do here now, I go to the calculator. So I multiply now. First of all, I have to minus, I have to cancel everything. Uh, what do I get rid of this? Is it M, MS, yes, MS? Oh, yeah. So, so now I multiply <clears throat> 0 0.1775 and I time it with 718.6. It comes to be 127. 0.55 million euros. 127.55 million. So basically, what I'm trying to say that if the reality is that Finnair does borrow, but just imagine Finnair had no debt at all, then the value of the company Finnair would have been hypothetically. 127.55 million lesser than what it is now. So in the total value of the company, which is, uh, which is 288.71, there is a contribution of how much? Uh, what number I said before? Oh yeah, there's a contribution of 127.55, approximately 128 million. So in this total book value of the company, there's a contribution equal to 128 million euros by the debt tax shield, basically. So if you want to find out the unlevered company, uh, Finnair as unlevered, then you can minus uh, 127.55 from 2887.1. And that would give you the value of the company. Finnair uh, had it been an uh, unlevered company. So this is a small exercise where you can find out uh, what percentage or what factor, uh, what portion of the value of the company is levered and what is unlevered. So this I have been talking to you before that uh, when you do these calculations, which I explained to you now, you are able to counter the argument of uh, Modigliani and Miller, who say that financing does not generate the value. All value is generated by the operating profit, uh, the operating activities, and we just saw that we did not touch EBIT. We didn't touch EBIT at all. We were able to calculate the tax rate, the effective tax rate, and we multiply it with the amount of debt the company has. Uh, neither tax rate nor debt uh, has been considered by Modigliani and Miller. And when you multiply them, we were able to generate some 127.55 million euros for Finnair in 2017 uh, as a debt tax shield, which would have been missing if Finnair was a unlevered company. And this value 127.55 is purely, purely, purely because of the company's financing. No investment, but purely because of financing. And this proves, uh, this is like a counter argument to Modigliani and Miller's theorem, okay? That's my main idea, that we are able to challenge the Nobel Prize winners economist here, that yes, I think we, we, have, a, some, we have something to ask you. Uh, Mm. Oh, am I going backwards? So, is it okay here? Task eight. Now you know what is task eight. I explained it with it. Yeah. So I think this is for today. And next next meeting would be our last meeting for the capital structure. Um, and that would be covering basically everything about uh, financing uh, side. And I think we'll be left with one more lecture then, and that I would decide, uh, I would see what other topic we can discuss. Maybe we should discuss more about investing side. 
that because we have studied about the financing side a lot. Uh, next meeting, we shall be having uh, financing side and then the following meeting we'll have on the investing side. So that would be a very balanced discussion about corporate finance. So we will be in a, in a way done with the risk, return, the fundamentals, and then a little bit more advanced topic of financing and investing. So 